With the sprinter, the instrument panel is removed together with the instrument panel carrier. But before you get started with the removal, first empty the air conditioning. This is a specific feature of the sprinter. First remove the air filter housing. Unscrew and remove the hose clamp and the intake hose. Then disconnect the two plugs, move the jump starting point and raise the air filter housing in front and remove. Now both test and fill connections are accessible of the high and low pressure line and the air conditioning service station can be connected. For your safety, wear gloves and glasses. Remove the protective caps. This is the thinner high pressure line. Connect the red tube of the air conditioning service station to this line. Now connect the blue tube to the thicker low pressure line. And the coolant can be removed. Always do this for the removal of the instrument panel because parts of the air conditioning are also removed. Next disconnect the ground line of the battery. If the vehicle has a roof antenna, the complete front roof lining must be removed. Otherwise, you can't get access to the roof antenna cables and the wiring harness. Start with the trim of the A-pillar, then the sun visors, and the dome lamp would switch. For the installation, tighten the new screws with 5 newton meters. Also remove the trim of the B-pillar and lastly the roof lining. We'll come back to the exposed antenna cables later. Now the preparations are concluded and you can get started with the removal of the instrument panel. Take out the lower covers in the driver's footwell. Unscrew a total of three screws. First remove the cover under the air nozzle and next the cover under the steering wheel. Also on the passenger side, remove the trim under the nozzle. Unclip the two clips and unscrew three screws in the lower part of the glove box. And remove the glove box lid. Unscrew three upper screws of the glove box holder. Now press down the trim. Remove the air hose and separate the plug for the lighting. And you can take out the glove box holder. For the next step, lever out the screen in the middle section. Use an assembly wedge. Separate the plug connectors here too. Both trim parts of the air nozzles are fastened with two screws which must be unscrewed. And remove both screens. On the passenger side, take out the floor mat, remove the front cover and the footwell cover in the middle. The cover strip of the floor covering in the passenger's entrance has three screws which must be unscrewed. On the driver's side, the strip is already removed. Fold the floor covering backwards and remove both foam parts. Unscrew four screws in the lower cover of the middle console. And the cover can be removed. 
This is one of the extractor hooks used to remove the CD changer if installed. You'll need four hooks. Use the hooks and unclip the four hold clips of the CD changer. You can order the hooks with the following part number. W 0-0-0-5-4-5-0-7-4-4. Pull out the CD changer carefully with the hooks and separate both plug connectors. Next, remove the cover of the gear shift. Lever the upper left corner, lift the corner and pull upwards. Now the screws are next. These five screws must be unscrewed. Also around the cover are four screws which must be unscrewed. Now you can take off the cover and remember to disconnect the plug connector of the 12 volt outlet. Next remove the shifting unit. Pull off the plug and unscrew both screws which fasten the shifting unit to the instrument panel. For the installation tighten both screws with 20 newton meters of torque. Unclip the gear cables on top using the assembly wedge. Next, unclip the cotter pin with a screwdriver. Then take off the shifting unit by sliding the gear cables through the given holes. When doing this, do not kink the gear cables. With the adjusting of the shifter, the function must be checked and repeated if necessary for the setting. Now the side air nozzles are next. Unscrew a total of three screws. One is on top in the cover, and the others are under the headlight switch. Take out the air nozzle. Here on the driver's side, disconnect the plug from the headlight switch. On the passenger side, unscrew the three screws. Here once more you see the positions of the screws. Before you remove the steering wheel, make sure that the wheels are straight. But first, remove the airbag. Undo the screws on the left and right in the steering wheel. For the installation, tighten both screws with 6 newton meters. Take out the airbag and separate the ignition capsule plug connector. and also the cable for the horn and the steering wheel keys. And remove the airbag. With the flex head wrench, unscrew the steering spindle screw. Please be sure to use a new screw for the installation and tighten with 80 newton meters. Take the steering wheel from the steering column. Lead the cables carefully through the opening in the steering wheel. For the next step, separate the plugs of the roof antenna from the cable harness. There are four plugs. Then unclip the cable from the bodywork by cutting the cable ties. Now remove the side covering in the passenger's footwell. Undo a hold clip on top and below a screw. Here separate all plug connectors in the cable harness. Here all together there are five plugs to be separated two large black plugs, and three on the right side with green cables. In addition, disconnect the ground line from the bodywork. 
Next, open up the cable riser cover. And here you'll find five plugs for the instrument panel. Disconnect everything. Here you'll see all plug connectors more clearly, which must be disconnected. Then unscrew four nuts in the firewall bushing for the steering spindle. To be able to better show you the removal of the lower fuse strip, we remove the lower panel cover. Pull the clips at the side outward and push the fuse strip to the back. Afterwards, cut the cable tie from the bodywork. Next, disconnect the ground cable at the PTC heater. And reconnect the ground cable once more. Disconnect the condensation tube and the plug connector. Then unscrew the positive cable of the battery. Under the middle section of the instrument panel, disconnect the plug of the airbag. Then proceed with the separation of connections and pipelines of the instrument panel in the engine compartment. First disconnect the universal joint of the steering spindle. Do this by unscrewing the nut. For the reinstallation, tighten the nut with 25 Newton meters. Then remove the bolt of the universal joint and take out the lower steering spindle. For the following steps, wear protective gloves. Clamp both coolant tubes so that so little coolant as possible can run out. Use a clean container to catch any coolant for possible reuse. Undo the two hose clamps and disconnect the hoses from the firewall. Then disconnect both refrigerant lines from the expansion valve. For the installation, tighten the nut with 6 Newton meters. Close the openings in the refrigerant lines and the expansion valve with a locking stopper to protect against dirt and humidity. You order the locking stopper kit under the number W129589000. 9100. These new sealing rings must be placed on the refrigerant lines. Cover these first with compressor oil. You can order the oil under the number A001989080800. The last step in the engine compartment is to undo the screws on the firewall. Altogether, there are five screws, which we have marked in red. For the installation, use a torque of 20 Newton meters. Then in the cabin, unscrew a total of seven screws in the instrument panel carrier, two on the left, three on the floor of the middle section, and two on the right. Tighten all screws for the installation with 20 Newton meters. And now the instrument panel with the carrier can be lifted out. This must be done with two people because the component is heavy.